as I said in the beginning, the two of the sections that are trying to overcome those rigs is 6.4 and 0.3 and 11.6.1. So with 6.4 and 0.3, the new PCI actually asking you to create an inventory of all the scripts that are running on your checkout pages. So they are saying, first things first, you need to create an inventory of all the scripts to know what you're running there and to justify any of them. You need to verify that you actually want to do them. Before the PCI, we just install every script and all in the entire website. Who cares? Put it in the page header and it's running there. But now uh, the new regulation asking you to verify you actually want them to be in the checkout page, even if they're not touching the credit card data. If they are in the page, in theory, they can access the data. That's uh, bad enough in that case. So you want to have an uh, inventory. You want to make sure they are authorized. You want to make sure uh, you have some kind of sense management, integrity, and some kind of validation to make sure you know them and to write justification. So when the auditor is going to come and ask you why you want to have this pixel there, you have a reason. You have a reason that the auditor will say, makes sense, it's my payment provider. It's an important analytics where we are measuring that uh, there's card process to make sure we don't have many declines or whatever. So there are reasons to have scripts there. I'm not saying don't put script on checkout pages. I'm saying you need to explain why. The way to resolve or to solve 6.4, 6B, there are either the uh, do it one by one, good luck, and you're going to need people and a lot of free time to go over all of checkout and verify all the scripts you have there. The automated process, which is reflected, we're going to talk about it later in the webinar. And there are also some kind of browser hacks or browser header you can use. Uh, a very known one is SRI, Sub Resource Integrity which is a way to like sign a script in the page to add a hash to every script. So the browser won't even run the script if the hash it changes. That's a very strong solution in the aspect that for me as an attacker, I can't change the script. If I have a script that I want to change it, I can't, the browser won't run it. The problem is that it's very hard to maintain a full list of all the scripts you have and actually to sign their hashes and to keep it updated all day long. If one of the hashes is going to be changed, the script is not going to run. And I will suddenly don't have a payment page because we just blocked jQuery or any other script. So in theory, you can do it on some open sources. You can't do it on third party vendors. You can't do us on Facebook to script sense every day. You can't do us of PayPal. It's script changes every day. And it will all only work on a very minimal script and it's going to consume you a lot of time and bad. Another solution the council recommend maybe is to use CSP, content security policy to say, create a whitelist approach, actually list like a firewall, like a client side firewall, list all the scripts that allow to be run. And then if another new script is entered to the page that is not allowed, it's not in the list, then it's going to be blocked. Now, again, CSP is a very good solution. Uh, it's it's strong solution. The problem in it, you need to have a firewall on your website. So you need to have an updated ruling of all the scripts and application and to define for each of them what they are allowed and not allowed to do. Now, if any of you that listening to us ever been in the infrastructure area and manage the firewall of the organization, you know what happened when you have too many rules in your firewall. In some case, things started to break and then you start to do any, any, and just uh, trying to allow all in because the marketing needed, the digital needed, and you're breaking. So again, CSP is a very good solution. The, the challenge is the maintenance of it, the ability to make sure that you have the right ruling, and there are other challenges in CSP. So for example, if you are allowing uh, Akamai CDN or you're allowing uh, to use some kind of CDN, you're actually opening the CDN for the page. So if I am attacker can know it and I can see the CSP header, I can just load my bad code to the CDN and it's going to be allowed. They need to be very specific on what you're allowing and not allowing, and that's open me doors to get in and out.